pupils go for the next one it is very important a design of rotor a design of rotor or a design of field system should consider this five titles we going to concentrate on a diameter of the rotor then flex in the pool then cross section area of the pool then height of the field coil then height of the pole so for the designing aspect of the rotor either a saline pole or either a smooth cylindrical you need to consider all these five points if the question asks a saline pool draw this saline pool explain a few points about this thing and go for the procedure or the question asks a smooth cylindrical draw a smooth cylindrical diagram instead of this diagram and explain a few points about smooth cylindrical rotor then go for the further steps so uh, that is not a issue here so here consider a saline pool rotor function is there so i can draw a saline pool content and declare about a few points its diameter is higher and a cross section length has been very small it is used for low speed this thing then after that i am going to start by a procedure uh, for the designing the first one is nothing but a diameter of the rotor so diameter of the rotor a direct equation is there to so finding a diameter of the rotor you have to subtract the diameter of the stator with two lg values so that is the thing uh, d is nothing but the stator bore or inner diameter then lg is nothing but the length of length of the air gap by subtracting this value to the d value with the content of 2 we can easily predict the dr the 2 is nothing but on the two side of the length now so for that uh, we can easily find the diameter of the rotor the second one is nothing but flux in the pool so 5p it is defined 5p is nothing but the product of two things one is nothing but leakage coefficient another one is nothing but flux here cl it is nothing but a leakage coefficient also called as leakage factor it was in the assumptions value uh, this value lies between 1.15 to 1.2 then phi is nothing but usual flux per pole it is in the weber so by the product of cl and phi we can easily predict the 5p which is nothing but flux in the pole so the second case is over then go for the third design it is nothing but a cross section area of the pole so the cross section area of the pole is denoted by ap it is find out by 5p divided by bp here the 5p is nothing but total flux per pole bp is nothing but what is b it's a flux density p is for in the pole so the flux density in the pole it is also in assumption that values are lies between 1.5 to 1.7 weber per meter square during a problem you have to assume between this value so by dividing these two things we can easily predict the value of cross section area of the pole but here a case is that this uh, rotor design we have a two types of poles one is nothing but a rectangular pole or it is a circular pole we, we, now we just consider with these two things the cross section area of the rectangular pole means it should be appeared like this diagram it is a rectangular term it is a length of the pole it is a breadth of the pole with this content the formula is there which is ap that is nothing but area of the pole is equal to 0.98 into length into breadth of the pole it should be in a meter square so it's a common formula for the rectangular length into breadth so but here what is the 0.89 is it is not a gravity 0.89 is nothing but i am going to take the area of 0.98 percentage why i am taking a 98 percentage means while pro, while for the designing i'm 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 making a corner should be in a round one so for the round corner a two percentage of area is get reduced in the 100 percent of area so for that it will become 98 percentage so for that in the formula i'm going to use the 0.98 into length of the pole into breadth of the pole in the case of circular cross section area we can find with the basic formula a bp is there which is nothing but a diameter of the circular cross section so for that the area of the pole is find out by pi by 4 bp square in meter square so uh, this is the two things the area of the pole the cross section area of the pole in case of rectangular i am going to use this formula in case of circular i am going to use this formula that's all for the third case then the fourth one height of the field coil so uh, here this height of the field coil calculations is depend upon the value of full load field mmf in this part in this part we also have one more title to determine the full load field mmf so peoples adhe title dhaan inga consider aagum so inga proceed pandra inda steps say idhe 50 unit la or portion a irukum so determine the full load field mmf abindra title la ipo paaka pora concerns ellame repeat aga podu so concentrate on this content so to determine the height we need to calculate the full load field mmf 
So the approximate value of load field MMF can be obtained by a graphical method. It is nothing but a diagram. By drawing a proper diagram, we can find the uh, full load field MMF value. With the use of full load field MMF value, we can easily find the height of the field coil. So before going to calculate about the height, just consider about some data here because uh, for these two steps, that means height of the pole and height of the field coil, you need to know about this consideration. Here, it is a dovetailed pole. Dovetailed is on this, this, this type of construction. It is a yoke. With this yoke, we have to fix a dovetail here. And this is nothing but the pole region. The overall HP is nothing but the overall height of the pole. Then, the overall height of the pole should be considered with the three heights. What is the three heights? Is nothing but first one is nothing but HS. It is nothing but height of the pole shoes. Then another one is nothing but a clearance portion. We have to provide some gap here for the winding. So it is nothing but DF. Then a next one is nothing but HF. So it is nothing but a height of the field coil. Then here also a clearance is there. So by adding all this thing, we can easily find the overall height of the pole here. Uh, what is the title now is, now we are going to find the height of the field coil. Here the shaded portion is nothing but the field coil. So now we are going to find this HF value. This HF value is easily find when you know about the value of full load field MMR. So let's go on find the full load field MMR. Before going to find the full load field MMR, you need to know about this four information. So by using a formula, you can predict these five values. First one is nothing but ATF not no load field MMR value. The yeah, formula is there by using we already discussed this portion in the state of itself. By applying this formula, we can find the ATF not value. Then ATA value. So it is nothing but your armature MMF. By using your formula, we can easily find the ATA value. Then next one, K, R, K suffix R value. It is nothing but your cross reaction coefficient. It is gathered by a curve or else it is also gathered by a open circuit and short circuit test. So here in this method, we're going to calculate uh, this KR by using a KR versus uh, psi graph. Then next one, uh, cos phi value. It is nothing but a lagging power factor. So after having these five values, let's go and construct a uh, graph. It is nothing but a phasor diagram. By constructing this phasor diagram, we can easily predict the value of uh, full load field MMR. So I can explain here one by one. First one, the first step of this graphical method is nothing but you have to fix one axis. That axis is nothing but X axis. Then in the X axis, you're just taking a length of ATF naught. It is nothing but no load field MMR. With the length of ATF naught, draw a straight line in the X axis and give the name of O to A. The line O to A is nothing but ATF naught value. Then after, uh, with the angle of phi, draw a current value with the incline. It is a lagging power factor. Now. So the current has been lagged with the voltage. So the I have drawn. Then after this thing, just draw a one more line with the angle of 90 minus 5 we already know about this 5 then subtract the 5 with 90 minus 5 and you got the angle with this angle draw a straight line with the length of ATA armature MMR so from the A point draw a straight line with the angle of 90 minus 5 with the length of ATA value armature MMR value then that line becomes A to B so the line of A to B is inclined with 90 minus 5 and the length is declared by AT5 value. A second step has been over. So the first step is draw a ATF not line OA. Second step is draw a ATA line AB and with the angle of 90 minus 5. After this, you need to find a point of C. So how we can able how we can find the value of C? That is find out by the value of KR. That is nothing but a cross reaction coefficient. So that value is find out by the AC divided by AB is equal to KR value. So you need to know about this KR value. How can we find the KR value? This KR is find out by getting a constant value of KR with the psi values. So you have to draw one graph here. That graph has been expanded by their appearance and it is intersect with y axis that is uh, a kr axis that value should be considered as a kr with this graphical term we can easily find the kr value also we have one more method here to find the kr that is by drawing a oc curve and a sc curve 
of the alternator test open circuit and short circuit test now we already uh, seen this content in emissions to itself by using that thing we can find the two field current with this two field current we can easily find the if that should be declared in your book you refer the book and find the content one is enough for this so here for the kr value i'm going to uh, find the kr by using this graph this graph is kr versus psi so after finding this kr substituting the kr here and the ac with a b ratios i can find the point here c after finding a point c i have to draw a line here o to c a line has been drawn o to c after finding the kr point here then next step we have to extend this oc line with uh, a limited uh, level uh, of extension is there so after extension of oc line then yeah, next step is nothing but with the end of the point b draw a line perpendicular to the oc extension so uh, a line has to drawn here it is perpendicular to extension line of oc so that's all for the content it will find the point of d after this line drawn it will intersect with the oc extension so that point is nothing but d so that's all for the phasor diagram here now the o d length is nothing to represent as a full load field mmr that's all people by this way only we can find the full load field mmr to determine the height of the field coil so after finding this thing just go with the next one so this is the complete procedure what I have I have explained here this is the consideration first one I have to draw a OA line with the value of ATF naught in X axis then take a power factor of pi then draw a AB uh, with the value of armature MMR with the angle of 90 minus pi and OA has been extended here uh, then a cutoff point AC has been found here uh, AC and AB in such manner of this thing the KR is nothing but a cross reaction coefficient it is dependent upon the pole or two pole pitch ratio it is nothing but uh, it is obtained by kr versus pi graph so a theoretical steps is enough so after this content draw a neat diagram of kr versus uh, psi so with this content uh, we can find the kr uh, after that you can find the point c then after finding the c uh, we have to join o to c here and extend it in the direction of c itself so then uh, from the point b you have to draw a line of perpendicular to oc extension that line is nothing but bd so that's all that's all for the final step the line of od is represented as a uh, full load field mmr so after finding this full load field mmr just go on so uh, finding the values of uh, copper areas the area is required now so just see the content net copper area of the field winding it is defined by af into tf AF is nothing but area of the field and TF is nothing but turns of the field. So by this product, we can find the copper area. So with this content, uh, for the simplification, we have to multiply and divide by uh, IF here. So this is the equation. I can multiply with the field current and divide by the field current. So I can rearrange this equation on this domain and get instead of I, IF and TF is declared as, I is declared as an ampere and T is declared as a turns. So it is nothing but ATFL. Then it is a MMF function. Then divided by uh, then IF divided by AF is considered as a current density del F. Here the del F has some limited values. It lies between three to four ampere per mm square. This value is nothing but a copper area, net copper area. Then we need a gross copper area of the field winding. For the gross copper area, we have to divide this net copper area to the space factor, copper space factor. So this is the content. A net copper area is nothing but AF AT. FL divided by del F. So this equation with the division of SF. So it should be multiplied 1 by SF. Here the SF copper space factor will be lies between 0 0.4 to 0 0.9. So this is the equation uh, for finding the uh, copper area, gross copper area of the field winding. Here one more method is also there to finding a gross copper area that is nothing but a gross copper area of the field winding is defined by the product of two things height of the field into uh, depth of the field it is a formula here so the depth of the field should be nearly in this terms 3 to 5 centimeter only so go for the content now equate these two condition uh, what is the thing is first one the gross 
copper area find out by this equation next one the same gross copper area find out by this equation equate these two equation here so after this equation we got the value here it is a hf hf is nothing but this is our process a height of the field coil so hf is solved by this equation reconstruct all this thing and find the hf value by using this hf we can easily predict the height of the field coil yeah, one thing is important you need to know about this thing af i mean atfl here it is nothing but your full load field mmf so that is calculated by a above procedure then a yeah, fifth step is there which is nothing but a yeah, height of the pole the height of the pole is found out by adding this five heights one is nothing but field coil height another one is pole shoe height another one is clearance height that is already seen by a diagram so just check that just a minute yeah see this diagram this is nothing but the pole shoes so you need to find the hs value then this is nothing but the clearance we have to uh, provide here for the winding now nah, that uh, clearance portion then this is nothing but the winding portion of the field so h so by adding this all five this is also a clearance uh, you can easily predict the hp value okay so just go for the content so this is the thing by adding a hf and by adding a hs and by adding a hc dash so with this value we can easily predict the hp here uh, these two things are already calculated hf and hs is uh, hf is already calculated hs and hc dash is been in the assumption hs is almost the value of 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 of hp then uh, hc is nothing but a clearance it's always a 0.02 meter so with this assumptions we can easily predict the overall height of the pole 